Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about MX Linux because I've just spent a month on MX Linux. So this review is slightly different to the other reviews I normally do. Uh, I did one for Ubuntu last month. So essentially, uh, normally when I do my reviews I install the operating system, I use it for a few days and then give a review on what I found, usually to do with hardware setup, uh, what's installed by default, what the package manager looks like, any issues I find on the way, how easy it was to install etc. Um, but in this series, a month on, I'm looking at how well did the distribution perform over the course of the entire month. Now I already liked MX Linux and when I say liked I mean I loved MX Linux the first time I used it and I'm not gonna lie this isn't my first month on MX Linux. MX Linux has been on one of my machines for a long time because I love it. It's probably my favorite of the Linux distributions. Now I'm not going to say it's the perfect distribution for the everyday Linux user. There might be others out there that would suit other people. Linux Mint is definitely one that most people are going to find a great starting point. But there's a lot to like about MX Linux. And this is my first time using MX Linux on KDE and it works just as well on KDE as it does on XFCE which is what I tried previously for MX Linux. So KDE, XFCE works perfectly fine on both. Now uh, I'm not going to say that everything was 100% perfect either because that's not how review should work. The default MX Linux does not use systemd and that can cause some problems when you uh, been using systemd for quite a while and you've forgotten the commands to actually use in it. What is good is if you go into the boot menu there's options for booting into the systemd version of MX Linux. That's good you've got the normal init system and you've got a systemd version as well so whichever you prefer you can boot into so I generally boot into the systemd version. The other thing you can switch between uh, if you're using the KDE is you can switch between X11 on the desktop or you can switch to Wayland. Now as much as I love MX Linux and I love it on X11 I am not the greatest fan of Wayland yet. I still think there is a lot to to work on and when I started on my month on the thing I was trying to do was install Wadroid so I could prove that uh, when you install apps via Wadroid uh, that they actually appear in the menu and I think I've still got Wadroid installed, I do, um, it's there, but um, it doesn't work very well on MX Linux with Way Wayland, it just doesn't seem to work very well. And uh, other things I don't like about Wayland is screencasting, really there's still not a great tool for screencasting, OBS is probably the best of them, but it's quite heavy in terms of memory usage. and it's kind of stutters along. It's, it's not like an X11. I, I prefer using something like Simple Screen Recorder um, because it's quite lightweight. It just records the desktop and records the audio, which is all I want it to do. Uh, for a lot of my other videos that I've done recently I've, that rely on Wayland, uh, I've ended up using GNOME Screen Recorder to cast the video and then do a voiceover afterwards, uh, which is how I, I get around that. But I'm not a great fan of Wayland at this moment in time. It's okay on a day to day basis, but it, it's still not mature enough as far as I'm concerned. It is getting better and it's getting better year on year. MX Linux is top notch. There's, I have had no faults with it during the course of the month in terms of. Uh, system outages or in terms of errors popping up or problems installing stuff. Now you can see that even though I've been a month on MX Linux I haven't actually changed the default background because actually for once I find it fairly inoffensive. Um, quite often I, I install a distribution and I just don't really like the desktop background but the MX one's quite a nice plain image and I've not found reason to and you can see how responsive it is. It's a really nice uh, distribution. Installing software um, doesn't get much easier than this. You basically, you've got popular application so you can either search for what you're looking for. So um, I installed Wine earlier and that's there and you can look for Steam. That's there. Chrome is there. So everything's available and you've got flat packs available. 
you've got um, other repos available. So it's a really, really good package manager with MX Linux. Generally, you'll find what you're looking for in the, in the package manager. You don't have to use the command line at all, really, to install software. And the other great thing about MX Linux that I like is all these tools. Uh, you've got tools for formatting USB drives, you've got boot options and boot repairs, GPG keys, you've got a USB maker, you've got package installer, you've got all these tools and most of them I, I, I don't even use. So an NVIDIA driver installer, you have this tweak tool which you can use to mess around with your KDE. I mean obviously uh, I've got a guide about KDE if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But there's a, a great set of tools and there's a help, there's a frequently asked questions section up here there's a user manual uh, all in all uh, MX Linux really is a great distribution I'm not going to go on too much about it I'm not going to show you every single feature that's on there I'm not going to sh show you how to do everything all, all, all this is is a review of what MX Linux is and how good it is and uh, MX Linux is ranked number one in the distro watch rankings that's not the same as the ratings um, you'll see from my previous video about void Linux that's rated the highest but MX Linux is ranked the highest which means lots of people are interested in it so that is my review of MX Linux what did you think about it did you like it did you see have problems that I didn't encounter if you did let me know and that's really the end of the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on everyday Linux user